Hi, it's Dr. Christine Arsenault, PharmD, Functional Medicine Certified Health Coach. Wanted to talk about the benefits of hyperthermia for Lyme disease. Before we could talk about why hyperthermia is so beneficial, I think we should address why conventional therapy does not always work for Lyme disease. Conventional therapy being antibiotics. So Lyme disease is caused by a bacteria, the Borrelia bacteria, and the conventional therapy is you use antibiotics or herbal protocols to kill off the bacteria, the organism causing the disease. However, there are some issues that makes it a little bit more tricky when it comes to the Lyme bacteria. One of those is slow division. So other bacteria commonly divide maybe like every 20 minutes, then the typical antibiotics on the market work and they can kill infection with like within two weeks. The Lyme bacteria is slower, so it divides like every 12 to 24 hours. This makes the antibiotics less effective because they tend to work better when things replicate faster. And it also would take like over a year, year and a half to treat somebody with how slow the bacteria divides. The antibiotics also destroy the good bacteria. So that's your gut microbiome, the good bacteria that you have, which makes up like 80% of your immune system. So the antibiotics are hindering your immune system, which you need if you have a pathogen, bacteria that doesn't belong there that your body is trying to get rid of. Also, this particular bacteria, it's a spirochete. So it bores into all all kinds of different places, into your joints, into different muscles, into your brain, places where it's hard for antibiotics to reach. It's also, the bacteria is extracellular and intracellular, and not an, all antibiotics can get to both places. Um, so it's harder for the antibiotics to get intracellular. It's harder for the antibiotics to get through biofilms, because the bacteria also produces a slimy biofilm layer to protect itself and to kind of hide from your immune system and hide from being detected and hide from the antibiotics that just can't penetrate that. Um, it's harder for antibiotics to get to areas with low blood flow. Um, and then there's different forms of the bacteria. So it's a spirochete, but there's also the round body form, the cyst or granule, L form, biofilm. So there's these different forms and you have to use different antibiotics to target the different forms. And the bacteria is, it's, it's a stealth microbe. It knows how to evade your immune system, how to evade the antibiotics. So it's really, really tricky to treat. It, it's estimated that 20 to 30 percent of Lyme patients go on to have a chronic or persistent form. It's possible that it persists if you don't treat it adequately. It's possible that you're not going to treat it adequately with the standard course of antibiotics for all of the reasons I just discussed. So what are the benefits of hyperthermia and what are the results like with Lyme disease and how does this compare to antibiotics or how can it even be used in conjunction with antibiotics? So according to a Swedish study that looked at the Borrelia and how it dies at 41.6 Celsius or 106.9 Fahrenheit, how 100% of the bacteria died after two hours of being held at that temperature. Uh, they also found that if you add ceftriaxone or another antibiotic, after elevating the person's body temperature, the medication's activity becomes amplified. And they found when you raise somebody's temperature to 41.6, the antibiotic became amplified 60-fold. So the study showed a 16-fold increase at one point during um, a, a, let, a temperature increase that wasn't quite this high. But when you get up to 41.6, the antibiotics are actually 60 times as effective. And the heat is also going to get into those places the antibiotics can't get, and the heat itself is going to kill them. So, according to the research that has been done um, with all of these patients that have had the whole body hyperthermia with Lyme disease, um, scientists and doctors are, have discovered that the hyperthermia kills Lyme microbes. So, again, that Swedish study confirms that the hyperthermia kills the bacteria that causes Lyme disease itself. It also increases the effectiveness of the antibiotics, like I just mentioned. So your antibiotics are going to be more effective and the heat itself is going to kill them and the heat is going to be able to penetrate places that the antibiotics might not be able to. Although the heat does increase the effectiveness of the antibiotics, it's going to increase that penetration. So that's going to help. 
Um, hypothermia also decreases the bacteria's resistance to antibiotics and it enables the antibiotics to get inside the cells easier. So they can penetrate easier and there's gonna be less resistance to antibiotics when you are using heat along with the antibiotics. Hyperthermia also busts through those biofilms I was talking about. So the heat itself can destroy those biofilms so that the antibiotics can then get in. Um, so the heat disrupts the structural integrity of the biofilms. And you know that's huge, um, being able to bust through those so you can actually make some headway in killing that bacteria. And then lastly, hyperthermia stimulates the immune system, that fever response. It's going to um, increase blood flow to organs and tissues. So that's going to help um, with oxygen supply. And so that's going to help kill the bacteria too, but that blood flow is also going to help those antibiotics get there. So you're seeing how it's all coming together. Um, and then the immune system responds with a strong production of natural killer cells and helper cells. Um, so this just gives your body a chance to fight harder. It's now, the immune system is now really strengthened. It's at a place where it can fight. It can also engulf and like eat up all that little debris of all the bacteria that's dying. So it can help with a Herxheimer reaction as well. Also, because the Borrelia is now gone, your pathogenic load is lessened. So you have a less lessened pathogenic load coupled with a stimulated immune system so you're in a much better place to now fight whatever else is going on, what other co-infections you have. There will most likely still be things to address. You have to look at imbalances and hormones. You have to look at nutrient deficiencies. You have to you know, continue to detox and look at your nutrition. It's complex. Um, usually the Lyme infection has caused a lot of damage and so there's other things to clean up and work on. Um, but this is gonna get you to a much better place where your body's actually able to do that, it's gonna respond better to other treatments now that the pathogenic load has decreased. Okay, and so what are those results? Well, I have actual statistics for Clinic St. George in Germany, which is the hospital that Dr. Dowse founded. And out of 809 Lyme patients evaluated six to 12 months after they had their antibiotic augmented whole body hyperthermia protocol, 74.3% had good to very good results. And this was measured by a reduction of the Burescano score of at least 50%. So the Burescano checklist is that long checklist that has all these different Lyme symptoms. Um, and so they use that before and after. And so 74.3% had good to very good results. 16% had satisfying results. They still required additional treatment, additional things um, to you know, help the damage of, of what this organism had done. There needed to be other things addressed. And then 9.6% had no benefit. So Clinic St. George sees the sickest of the sick. A lot of people have had 10 to 20 doctors, have had um, undiagnosed Lyme disease for a long time before they make it there or have been misdiagnosed with other things. So sometimes it's too late or it's not enough for what they have going on. So 9.6%, no benefit. But 74.3% is a really, really good response rate when we're talking about something like Lyme disease, when we're talking about antibiotics that can't get to these sites of infection. So extreme whole body hyperthermia can really reduce your pathogenic load and specifically Borrelia, the Lyme disease causing bacteria. So once you're able to get to that place and your body is stimulated, your immune system is stimulated, you have less pathogenic load, you can really start to see results and really shift your treatments. And you'll see that other treatments will start to work more effectively because you, start, you have a little bit less going on. And there still might be layers to get to. You have to address methylation issues. Maybe you have toxic heavy metals or mold toxicity or mast cells activation syndrome. Uh, there could be other things to address. This might not be completely the end of the road, but it will get, it has very good data of getting people to that next level of wellness, that just achieving that next step so that they can then continue to peel back more layers and keep climbing and climbing to that healthy place. And so most people feel like they are able to get their lives back. They're able to get to a place that they just were not at before with the extreme whole body hyperthermia. 
And if you are looking for some more details on the facilities that provide this, you have any questions about whole body hyperthermia, you want to know if this is an option for you, maybe for cancer, maybe for Lyme disease, then I will post a link to schedule a call with me. We can schedule a call. It's completely free. We will talk about if any of these facilities are a good fit. We will get your questions answered. And I will even give you access to our free guidebook, which is extremely detailed. It tells you how to prepare, what to expect while you're at a hospital that does hyperthermia, and how best to sustain your results when you get home. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.